Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm David Kerr from Lansing in Michigan, and these are your latest news headlines from around the world. Pope Francis has described the war in Gaza as terrorism after an Israeli military attack upon a Catholic parish in the Palestinian territory killed two Catholic women and destroyed a convent run by the Missionaries of Charity Religious Order. In a statement, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem say that an Israeli sniper shot Nahida Khalil Anton, an elderly woman, and her daughter Samar Kamal Anton on Saturday as they exited the church building and were walking towards the Missionaries of Charity convent. They also say an Israeli Defence Force tank fired on a rocket which struck the convent destroying the building's generator and setting off a massive blaze that damaged the house. Two more rockets reportedly rendered the convent uninhabitable for the 54 people with disabilities for whom the sisters of Mother Teresa were caring. On Sunday, Pope Francis condemned the attack in the parish, saying that there were no terrorists hidden inside, but only families, children, people who are sick and have disabilities and nuns. He added, quote, some say this is terrorism, this is war. Yes, it is war, it is terrorism. Meanwhile, for the first time in its more than two-month-old war with Hamas, Israel opened a direct humanitarian border into Gaza on Sunday. The move comes as Israel also increases its airstrikes on Gaza, claiming that military pressure is the only way to rescue its hostages. Elsewhere, and the New York-based Jewish advocacy group, the Anti-Defamation League, say that they have recorded a rise in anti-Semitic incidents in the United States since the Israel-Hamas war began two months ago. The ADL say they've recorded a total of 2,031 anti-Semitic incidents in the US since October. That's the equivalent of 34 anti-Semitic incidents per day. Pope Francis celebrated his 87th birthday on Sunday morning by visiting families and children supported by the Vatican's Santa Marta Pediatric Dispensary. Ahead of his Sunday Angelus, the Holy Father was presented with a cake and a bouquet of sunflowers while those present sang happy birthday. Thanking those who were present for their birthday greetings, the Pope urged the children to prepare their hearts for receiving Jesus this Christmas. Italy's President Sergio Mattarella also sent his best wishes to the pontiff upon his birthday. A Vatican court has sentenced Italian Cardinal Angelo Becciu to five and a half years in jail for financial crimes. The 75-year-old former advisor to Pope Francis is the most senior Vatican official ever to face such charges. The trial centred on a London property deal that ended in a huge financial loss for the Vatican. Cardinal Becciu strongly denies the charges of embezzlement and abuse of office. Speaking after sentencing was handed down, his lawyer said that his client is innocent and would now lodge an appeal. The US Senator Marco Rubio has written to Pope Francis asking him to intercede for the release of the incarcerated Nicaraguan Bishop Rolando Alvarez. In a letter sent last week, the Florida Senator revealed evidence claiming that Bishop Alvarez has been enduring torture at the hands of the Nicaraguan government. Bishop Alvarez was sentenced to 26 years in prison for treason in February 2023 after speaking out against the authoritarian regime of President Daniel Ortega. Earlier this year, he refused an offer to leave the country for the United States, along with 222 other political prisoners. The Catholic charity Aid to the Church in Need has donated a Christmas gift of over half a million euros to more than 54,000 war-affected children in Lebanon and Syria. Approximately 70% of the population of Lebanon lives in extreme poverty, while in Syria that figure stands at 90%. That's according to UN statistics. Aid to the Church in Need have backed the Christmas campaign in Syria for the past eight years. Meanwhile, this Christmas marks their third year distributing gifts in Lebanon. Pope Francis has called on the international community to ratify an international agreement that would govern the advancement and application of artificial intelligence. Pope Francis made his comments in a speech to mark the 57th World Day of Peace. The Holy Father said that new technologies must always be directed to the pursuit of peace and the common good. The 57th World Day of Peace falls on January the 1st, the Feast of Mary, Mother of God. 
Over two dozen human rights activists are petitioning the United States Congress to put pressure on the US State Department to relist Nigeria as one of the worst violators of religious freedom in the world. Nigeria was designated as a country of particular concern for religious persecution by the US government in 2020. However, the administration of President Joe Biden removed the West African country from the list in 2021. Meanwhile, in a separate development, the US Commission on International Religious Freedom is calling upon the White House to classify India as a country of particular concern. The Commission points to recent efforts by the Indian government to silence activists, journalists and lawyers at home and abroad. A United Nations report claims that the Taliban government in Afghanistan is putting female survivors of abuse into prison, claiming it is for their own protection. The report said that the practice harms the survivors' mental and physical health. It also highlights that there are also no more state-sponsored women's shelters in Afghanistan since the Taliban returned to power in 2021. The report was produced by the United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan. The US government is calling for the immediate release of the pro-democracy media tycoon Jimmy Lai ahead of his trial in Hong Kong on national security charges. Condemning the prosecution of Mr Lai, who is a Catholic, the United States are urging the authorities in Beijing and Hong Kong to respect press freedom in the former British colony. Under Hong Kong security laws, Mr Lai is charged with plotting to publish seditious information and collaborating with foreign forces. He will be tried without a jury and has also been denied the lawyer of his choice. If found guilty, Mr Lai could be sentenced to life imprisonment. A boat carrying migrants has capsized off the coast of Libya, killing over 60 people, including women and children. According to a United Nations agency report on Saturday, the craft was overturned due to rough waves near Zuwara on Libya's western coast. Libya is one of the key departure points from where migrants attempt to cross the Mediterranean Sea to enter Europe. The International Organization for Migration estimates that more than 2,200 migrants have drowned in the Mediterranean this year alone. Meanwhile, nearly 15,000 migrants have been apprehended and sent back to Libya. Finally, meet the Catholic woman in Peru who has just decorated her home with more than 340 nativity scenes. Miriam Valencia from the Miraflores district of Lima has been collecting nativity scenes for the past 32 years. This time it took her one and a half months to complete her arrangement of all her cribs. Miriam's home displays nativity scenes from Argentina, Colombia, Spain, India, Ecuador, Russia and Asian, Arab and African countries. She says the joy and blessings she receives while exhibiting the cribs to people is priceless. That's your latest headlines for now. Do join us for more tomorrow. You can also join us at swnews.org for news updates. Shalom.